just want so to just check whether someone. Excuse me, Tony. Yeah, sorry. you're right, Simon. I just want to check that everybody's on mute. Everybody's on mute, are they? Because I can yeah. hear some background music. That's yeah, I'm getting, sorry. I'm getting, I'm getting that too. Are you able to mute yeah. it there, Simon? Uh, I can, yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's a bit better. All right. I'll um. I'll continue. So what are some of the ways that we can manage our stress? So in that first point, we talk about intentional breathing. And so the concept of intentional breathing is the idea of uh, sitting down and actually stopping what we're doing and focusing on our breath. So doing breath work. Uh, there are a number of apps out there um, and let me just say that these two apps that I've mentioned here, I have no affiliations with them whatsoever. One is an Android app and the other is an iPhone app or, or a, uh, an iTunes app for, for that reason. So effectively, both these apps are, are free and effectively they help us to manage our stress. So you can choose the time, whether it be five minutes, 10 minutes or longer and you sit there and they take you through a journey of breath work. So it might, the app might ask you to breathe in through your nose, hold it for five seconds, and then exhale through your mouth. And what breath work does is it removes that stress response. So if we've got our foot on the accelerator and we're feeling stressed throughout the day, then effectively through breath work, we learn to put our foot on the brake. Yeah. So we're learning to manage our stress response and relax our body. And effectively, this is the uh, precipice to mindfulness, learning to understand the connection between our mind and our body and to voluntarily switch our stress response. And let me just give you a quick example of something that I've been doing for the last few years. I do a lot of writing, having written books and continue to, to write books. Um, I find that I tend to edit a lot of doing? Unmute all. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? We can hear you, Simon. Oh. oh. Did I? <laughs> Sorry. How do I unmute him? Can every can every can everyone hear me now? I can hear oh, you. Oh yeah, now. we can hear you. Okay, great. It must have gone offline for a moment there. How do we do that? I don't know how to do it's that. Just... Huh? You're right? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so just getting back to that point about um, intentional breathing. And so what I'll do in the afternoon is, is have a 15 minute nap. And what that 15 minute nap helps me do is to become more conducive to editing work in the late afternoon. But before I take a nap, I might do some intentional breathing using one of these apps. And effectively, it, it's the system of teaching my body to reduce stress. And effectively, I'm telling my nervous system, I'm telling my hormonal system that uh, to, to relax, to reduce the amount of cortisol in my body, to reduce the amount of stress in my body. And it becomes a mind body conditioning. So I'm training, I'm gearing, I'm carving and creating a neural network 
in my brain, which really helps to target my body's uh, re relaxation response. And if you're interested in investigating this work further, I would certainly encourage you to Google or look up the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza, who does a lot of work in this area of mind, body, intentional breathing, uh, rewiring our, our nervous system and our mind. And it really does work. And over time, our mind learns to actually switch off and filter off, uh, filter out stress and relay that to our body. And then it becomes a two-way communication. So long ago, it was thought that the mind only talked to the body, but it's since been shown that it's a two-way uh, freeway where the body is also communicating back to the mind. So one of the points that we mention here is to use a wind down ritual in the evenings. And uh, in one of the seminars that I pre uh, present to corporate companies, we talk about the idea of young children having a wind down ritual. And in that ritual, we might, you know, uh, read them a book. They might have a warm shower in the evening, a glass of milk, and then we might dim the lights. And what we can do is mimic that behavior and teach our nervous system that uh, or to, to wind down and turn down that stress response as well. And so with regards to that, what we want to do is minimize the amount of uh, light that coming into our eyes. And effectively, a lot of people tend to play on their smartphones or their, their iPads, or they might watch TV late at night and then transition straight to bed and expect that their body is just going to be lights out. And effectively, what we need to do is to transition, use a transitional component in order to help us wind down in the evening. So one of the recommendations that Simon and I uh, look for is at least seven to nine hours of sleep. And in this period now of the pandemic where we're in lockdown and restrictions, hopefully we're able to get those types of uh, sleep hours. I've been communicating with a number of uh, coaching clients recently who are telling me that uh, their sleep has improved because they're able to sleep more and they're not having to commute long hours anymore. So they're able to go to bed at a reasonable hour and wake up at a reasonable hour. So it's probably finding that sense of normalcy when we also go back out into the real world in the coming year. One of the other mechanisms that we can manage our stress is through recording our thoughts um, and also keeping a gratitude journal. And what I mean by a gratitude journal is just writing out, whether it be twice a week, three times a week, it might be daily, what we are grateful for. Um, and I know it's become this whole mem and this um, popular pseudoscience that keeping a gratitude journal um, is, you know, this airy fairy idea. But again, Joe Dispenza, who's done a lot of work and scientific work in this area, has shown that gratitude actually balances or rebalances our nervous system and rewires our brain. And we know that through the process of uh, neurogenesis, where the mind is constantly rewiring itself. And if the mind can rewire itself, then the mind can relay those signals and messages into our body. Therefore, switching off or turning down that volume on stress. So it's what are we grateful for? Tapping into those emotions, recording our thoughts, and it can be as simple as writing, writing it down physically, hand uh, writing it down, or it can be as simple as recording it into your phone. We can talk about our problems with our loved ones if they're willing and able to hear about our problems. And also staying in virtual contact with family and friends, which now more than ever is incredibly important. And then the final point there is getting out into nature where it's possible, again, depending on your state restrictions and whether that's uh, feasible. Um, getting out into nature helps us become grounded. 
um, one of the practices that I often recommend to really busy corporate individuals is to take a walk along the beach, um, you know, given the respective uh, restrictions in their state, you know, barefoot. And it's been shown that the uh, our feet on sand or on ground or on grass is quite grounding. There's a theory called the Schumann Resonance Principle, which says that our uh, brain cycles and the earth cycle actually resonate on the same frequency. And that by getting in contact with mother nature, it is quite grounding and calming. And so we pull ourselves back down into a parasympathetic, that rest and digest response. So we can consciously control our stress response. Uh, many people have believed for so long that um, we couldn't, that anxiety grabbed a hold of us or stress grabbed a hold of us and it took, it took the reins. But through intentional breathing, through um, concerted focus, through nutrition, through mindfulness, through meditation, through all these different types of practices and habits, we can teach, reteach, retrain our mind and body to become more relaxed, less stressed as a result.